Rural Heritage on RFD TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319 362 3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Hi, I'm Joe Mishka. Welcome to another episode of Rural Heritage TV. It's hard to turn around in the Lancaster, Pennsylvania area without bumping into a historical treasure, often related to farming. Art Reist of Lancaster, Pennsylvania is a passionate collector. He collects horse-drawn vehicles, antique tools, and implements and anything else that pertain to the world of agriculture and commerce in the past two or three centuries. He also collects stories. Art showed us the barn that has been in his family for generations, as well as a couple other barns in the area that retain much of their original historical architecture. But first, we talked about old tools and how they would reveal the history of the work they did and the people that used them. You know what I love about old stuff is you can just see how it's worn. You can see oh, how it, it speaks used. to you, doesn't it? It does speak to you. It does. The people that used it talk to you through their, through their hands. And um, anybody that doesn't see it. that, I feel sorry for them it because gives me goosebumps. Well, it, it does. Really well, I'll show you things. We had things go back into the 1500s. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, you're only seeing a. This is about a sixteenth of what you're going to okay. see. Well, I have two two barns I want to show you. Okay. All right. One is the. A uh, barn where they started their brethren in Christ Church. Okay. It's built in the 1700s. Okay. And then I have a friend of mine over here. I should told you about the cabin he has in the back of his house. And right, right. Yeah, you ought to see that. Great. They're Conestoga wagon saddles, original saddles. Uh, little goat wagon here I got out of uh, Dayton, Ohio. I have a story of provenance about that. Uh, there's some Conestoga team harness hanging up there, but I'll show you some other. We'll, we'll keep moving. That is a harness rack. Okay. That's for the. That's, and it shows if you read any of the books on barns, that's what that's for. See this. The stalls went this way. Slip They're, stalls. This for horse stalls here. The horse Slip stalls though, but the tie stalls. Tie not, stalls. Not box stalls. You're right. Tie stalls. Right. Yeah. And they hung. They hung their harness on there. Okay. See, I just that all disappeared because back in the 50s, my dad took all this apart. But there's a barn up in Nesville up here. It has everything in, and they're letting it fall down. Yeah. Built in 1861, right there before. The, you got to see it. It's perfect. It has everything they talk about in the book. Yeah. It, they should be fine for that. Anyway, that's, that's where my great-grandfather kept his harness. You can see the door in there. They used to open yeah. that door and open that door. If they wanted to weigh, they'd open that door, and they could reach in and, and operate the scales. And we have the scales that were sitting out there. Here's a little huckster card I, I built. Uh, I have the original. But uh, <clears throat> so I had uh, we, we loaned things to advertising companies and that type of thing sure. uh, periodically, and they called me about four or five years ago, and they said, "Art, do you have a huckster card?" I said, "No, I don't." It is very rare. They were very rare. Reason being, reason being is they rotted. People let them. They burned them. A man had sold me that little wagon there. Collected wagons, not much, but he he collected harness things. And uh, he said, Art, I regret one thing. I said, what's that? He says, during World War I and II, he said, we'd go around as boys, and we would collect all the wagons and carriages and sleighs in the town of Dayton. And he said, we'd put them in a vacant lots and burn them. Take the, the take the iron and sell it. Yeah. He said, I regret that to this day. And my dad got started collecting this. I'll show you. I'll, I'll keep on. I'll keep on. Here are the tools. We'll yeah. get yeah, 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 yeah. Here are the tools that, that would have been used to build the barns. Now, if somebody gives a talk on tools, which they did, or on barns, why wouldn't they have tools like this? There's another one. That's just true. This is a carpenter's ads. See? Here's a shipbuilder's ads. See the difference? Absolutely. The pole's yeah. different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See? yeah. And people say, well, why, why does this have a head like this and not like that? I said, because this is to, dri uh, to drive those pins Flip it over and, and use it as a hammer to drive the pins bet. in, the wooden yeah. pins and the pegs in the. You bet. Here's a ribbon, a ribbon auger. We call it a spire auger, a ribbon auger. 
Here's a pit saw. Yeah. This is a saw where somebody would stand under a pit. They put a log like this. Right. And the man on top would cut like this. And the man on the bottom would go like that. Imagine that all day long. We met with Chris Weaver, who showed us his bank barn built hundreds of years ago, and that, according to Chris, was designed to operate as more than a shelter, but a system on the farm. A, a bank barn is a system. Right, okay. And just like you can, wherever you're at, you can go up and down, you don't have to go outside. And like this has two ways down, there's a stairway here, here's another stairway to go down to the cellar. Chris's barn has held corn, oats, barley, forage, and more, including tobacco, which during its heyday would hang from the top of the barn to the floor. Well, and this was set up for eight tiers. Is that right? This will this will drop from eight tiers all the way down to the floor okay. if if they hang it they decide to hang it to the, to the floor. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how many acres it would actually hold, but. Uh, uh, well, I mean, our, all the bays are scaffold or set oh, for scaffolding. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you could probably get 10 in here, I think. 10, yeah, if, you're right. Maybe 10, right. but yeah. I, I'm, oh, not a, I'm not a tobacco barn? farmer. Uh, this is the second barn on this foundation. So okay. this barn was built in 1929. Okay. Yeah. And those joints, that's called a diminished shoulder. See where the two joints are when they come together? Right. It's a diminished shoulder. I'd climb up there. But that'd be the thrashing floor. Because it has the sides on. Right, there you go. Sure. Is that a straw mallow, Rich? This barn's kind of unique because it has two granaries. Okay. A lot of the barns had one. Okay. And there's one here on this side. And then I can show you another one. This door we think is probably out, out of one of the original barns. All this is like hand worked, um, hand worked steel and doesn't require, quite remind you of 1929. Just seems like it's older than that. Sure. I don't have everything quite cleaned up in here like I would like to. I'm, I'm working sure. at working at the barn here. Sure. Uh, but this would have been where they would have stored, stored grains, small grains. Yeah. Loose or in bags? Loose. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I would check t with Art about that. They would store the grain loose, right? Oh, this, yeah. this came in loose. Yeah, they put in, what and then these do, boards. Like, yeah, this is just tell, showing you there. So would that be corn? That no, be... that was small grain. It would so be oats wheat or, or barley. barley. Wheat or barley, barley yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have that in our barn too, and um, gosh, it's a dirty job. And then I was telling Chris over here, there's, there they weigh the bags. See, you bag it, you right, can right. weigh it. Yeah. But our, ours has a. Now this has a door you can open up too, but ours has a hole in the floor where you take the boards up and you can shovel the pulleys up and let the grain run out into your wagon. That's why it's under the four bay. Yeah, okay. it's over above the four bay. Yeah. Right. But you, yeah, you have the scales. Chris, you're doing. Yeah, and there's there's still there's still some holes that are patched. Yeah, could be could be for that. Just you know. for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't see that when I was up here the other time, but they always put the. I don't know of any barn that didn't put their, their granary over top the four bay because of that. You know, I don't know of any that didn't. Had some gravity feed, yeah. at least at the end. Yeah. <laughs> right. Not bay. have to handle it. Is that, is that the number four or F-O-R-E? F-O-R-E, yeah, okay. it's right down. We're standing above okay. it. Right and they here. call it a four bay because it's... It's, it goes out before in front of the barn. Gotcha. Yeah, it covers, it covers the... It's like a area. porch. Yeah, right, exactly, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It protects the barn doors and everything. Below. Yeah, you can open the doors up. There's half doors down there. The horses can look out. It lets sunlight in, lets air in, and yet they're not completely blocked off. And look right there. There's a buggy or right a wagon wrench. Yep, right. That tells you how big a wagon it was used mm -hmm. to, to haul at. Yep. When they thrashed in the, in the barn, they always had water on the straw. Okay. They didn't soak it, but they had enough water as to prevent fires. So in the books, I see a book that had a, they said they had a, a, a cistern up, up above there. And up in the- So it collected rainwater yeah. up the roof. And they said, they don't know why. Well, that's why. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our thrash machine, I have a thrash machine. So they're sprinkling the straw. Yeah, just, just a little bit to keep it uh, right. damp a little bit. And because uh, the straw they were using for bedding, they weren't feeding it. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. But that's what they did. Yep. 
That goes down to the tobacco cellar, and we can show you that here. Yeah. I can show you our tobacco cellar. Yeah, so this is, um, he might, Art might, Art's a bit of a tobacco farmer, he knows it too. And then in here is our dampening cellar. And uh, they would have brought the tobacco down on a damp day like today okay. when the leaves wouldn't shatter. Right, okay. And then they would bring it down through a hole. There's holes here in the floor where they can drop, drop it down. And then they would, uh, this is a dirt floor. Then they would layer all this tobacco in here and let the, the moisture from the ground continue to keep it damp. When you're done stripping tobacco, leave all the doors open. Leave, like you're doing, Chris, leave that air in here or this floor will rot. Mm -hmm. I was in a barn up in uh, Lidditz where we walked in the barn and they had the whole place closed up. They weren't farmers. And we walked in that barn. I'll tell you what, that floor, and they had beams like this, but the floor would go like this. And I told them, I said, you better, they were having an auction. I said, you better make sure you, you uh, rope that off so people don't walk over. Oh, uh, that won't break. I said, oh, yes, it will. Because mm -hmm. it had been there for probably 60 years without being open. Softening up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're yeah. doing the right thing, Chris. You're letting the air in here. Yeah, you, it's, it's very important to let, uh, don't want to make it tight. No, no, yeah. isn't this nice? Here's an early tobacco press. It's an early tobacco press there. For making bales? Yeah, for making bales, Chris. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll show you how that works. We, we have some there at home. We'll have to show you our tobacco cellar. And was Chris, the tobacco grown around here for smoking tobacco? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. type, 41. type 41. I think that was the most popular back in the day, right? Yeah. yeah. There was three of these presses in here, and then the family. Oh, I didn't even know that did this that. This is the lid. <laughs> this is the lid. It goes on top here. Like this. It's nice you're preserving that, Chris. So we uh, put the uh, put the lid up there. Uh, so I, uh, that latches like that. You fill it with tobacco, and here, see this eyelet? That's for a tobacco ne uh, needle. That's for the needle. Anyway, you fill it up, then you put this on top, and then then you take this, set this on top of there, and then you have a crank. I don't know where the crank is. It's around here somewhere. I'm sure. Okay. Probably right. in the tobacco cell. All right. It's the ratchet down there. Right. The ratchet that. And as you ratchet that, of course, it pushes this down. And that's got, those are just boards? That's got grooves cut in it. Well, yeah, well, that's what this is. What you do is, after you have it pressed, you fold the sides down, like Caitlin was showing us. Right. Fold the si okay. both sides down. And then you take a needle with what we used to have bale rope. That's what we used to have bale rope for. And uh, another story, when I went to work for Barry Farrell, he said, Art, I want you to cut every bale rope at the knot. And he was in the military. And he okay. said that, you did that. Okay. You didn't mm -hmm. cut it a half inch away, you didn't right. cut it two inch, you cut it right at the knot. I said, we always do that. Well, why would you need to do that? I said, because we bail tobacco. Well, he didn't know. So what we used to do is take the, the knot, we put the knot at this end, we'd run the needle through. You can see that there's grooves down here Yeah, the grooves well. down here, see? So you yep. could put the needle through. So they run, this groove is the same as the ones down below. Can't really show you that. Chris, this is great. Mm. You do it. Okay. My yep. God. And you, you, you run the loose one end over this way, bring it up, run the needle through here, yeah. pull the rope out, and then you, then you, I'll have to show you how to do that, Jeff. You, you go and pull it, you make a, a knot with a loop, right. take the top rope, put it through the loop, pull it up, make a knot again. Right. You do that every, all the whole way along. Chris then showed us a log cabin that was first built on the property and that has some amazing history, as well as a kind of underground cellar that now exists beneath his house. So this would have been what they would have called the homesteading cabins. So before the big house was built to get started, they made a, a smaller cabin and they would have came in here. Um, yeah. Those walls have been chinky. They're still, yeah. still there. Here's an open fireplace. Here's like a sit-in fireplace. Look at this. 
I think a later somebody would have put um, but butcher kettling in there, but yeah. this was designed to like sit here and they had to, you know, make a fire on the hearth. That goes to the upstairs and that, that has a total, if you want to go up the stairs are strong. Yeah. yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> this really is. I, I would think this is one of the earliest buildings in Lancaster County, maybe Pennsylvania. Well, I mean, you got to Hans Herr at 1710. Okay. So, this this John George Nicholas Bell, or Book, that's how they spelled it in the, Europe. And then he came over in a 1728 Albany ship. Wow. And then his first year was with the Zartmans in Brookerville, and in 1729 he moved to Lancaster and he married Elizabeth Lynn. And then the log cabin here is built probably between 1730, 1740. George uh, Buch, that's the old German spelling bow, paid a fine of 25 pounds for harboring a British prisoner of war. March 26, 1783. And that, he was harbored in this basement. And the basement has gotten through a trap? Yeah, there's a, there's a cellar. We can, okay. we can see it. Oh, that's oh, outrageous. Look at that. I can't believe they had typewriters. I don't understand that part of it, how they got the type. Right. But, well, that that was kind of a, a print that then they had, they wrote on. Okay. Printing press. Yeah, I think so. Or yeah, a type, a type print. I think yeah. so. Yeah, and there's dates of 1783, March the 20th, 1782. That's amazing. And it's in pounds, it's not dollars. Right, right, right. <laughs> and it's paid to English, yep. to England. So is the, um, the cellar in your basement something we can look at? Is it it's called an arch, an arch cellar. Oh, it's a, a root cellar. It's a, yeah. And it used to have out, uh, access to the outside. It still does. Mm -hmm. Is it doesn't. Any... It's 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 a floor now. Okay. The house, the house was over. the house was. Uh, there's a floor up there. This that's is top. amazing. And so, it had a way to get air. Yes, that's. We have it closed up now yeah, because yeah. it's winter. But sure. we open that up in the springtime. Yeah. This is wonderful. Yeah. It's in great shape. And they had these old hooks out yeah. of the ceiling. Yeah. 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 That is so cool. Thank you. Sure. Melvin Landis showed us one of his barns and pointed out many of the original features of the barn and some of the repurposed materials making up other parts. So right here is that the original whatever. So this was the man who built it, Isaac, IHL, Isaac Hans Long. There's a 1754, 1754. This would be like the year of Lord Jesus Christ, whatever, and uh, his wife's name was Anna, so that was. So that's basically just carved lightly into the wood, and you've painted it, or someone's painted it to exactly. bring it forward. Yeah, yeah, we just that is highlighted awesome. it with some white paint. It would be easy to lose it, it to, if it wasn't painted like that, and you didn't know it was there. Right. It would be harder to spot. That is right. terrific. We had a man from the Methodist Church that wanted me to take that out and give it to him. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Mel. That's wrong. That's so wrong. Well, he was just, you know, a college boy, a guru, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had no he thought idea. it'd be neat to have. Yeah. Crazy. Good Lord. Oh my gosh. It's like, look at, look at who, the beams. Who would, who would ever take beams. that out? Right. It would make, it, even would make if you, God cry. Yeah, yeah. That's just crazy. Even if you could, it's like, why yeah. would you? It's like yeah. you'd have to put something else there. Anyway, it would never be the same. In that something though. It's got a ring on a staple here. Yeah, tie the horses there, no doubt. So these, this is oak, isn't it? Oh yeah, this is oak. Yeah, all these are oak. It weathers well, doesn't it? Oh, it does. Yeah. It it actually does better exposed than like in a damp like sure. hidden place. Right, we were right. just talking about that, yeah. It's out of the weather, but it's it's in the air. Right. Yeah, it's covered. Yeah. That is terrific. 
Well, Mel, is this, is this post? Is this original? Oh, I kind of doubt it, but I, I have no idea. Because it looks like they would have, could have put this up higher or lower, depending on what they wanted to do. Yeah, I don't know. I think what so it was, what it was that post was from something else, and somebody repurposed it and put it yeah, here. You, the iron works old. Yeah. You don't think it was an axle? I mean, it's got, looks like that, doesn't it? It looks yeah. like something was, and then they yeah. just yeah. cut it short. I'm yeah. thinking it was something else somewhere else so if you look in here there's a stone wall here a lot of the historians believe this was the original barn it only came over to here and it was only like one story it wasn't the whole full if you look out here you can kind of see that they would have added to it to it yeah. so it's very possible they started with a small barn yeah it was a lot of work to get this stone out and to build Wouldn't it, it whatever yeah where's the quarry for this stone nobody knows Must this is very flat stone to be around here yeah so you can almost see here, maybe you can't see it, how high the original barn oh, yeah, was. Yeah. You see the bigger stone Stays there? Up top. Yeah, yes, you see that? Absolutely. It was a, it was a different build. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Isn't that interesting? So those that window and that door were right at the top. Right Apparently. The top. Well unless they added that when they did their second build, who knows? Up and, yeah, set those in there, right. You know, these bottom ones are probably original. Yeah, that's so cool. Those windows, whatever you call them. Right there, they probably have a sway beam. Okay. The horizontal one here. Yeah. Spanning this gap. Yeah. Okay. If I have that correct, I'm pretty sure it's correct. And over in the other barn, we saw a career with Chris Weavers, and he had a jeweled post. The Joel Post is one that's wider at the, at the top than it is at the bottom. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he had some over there, too. This is, I always enjoyed, Mel, I come over here sometimes and bother Mel, so it's always fun to come and see, see uh, these barns and how nice he keeps them. That wall is how thick is that? Two feet or more? Oh, uh, I don't know if it's quite that thick, but close at the bottom, I'm, it's close to that. Yeah. Would there have been tobacco hung in here? Oh yeah, the whole way up to the peak. You better believe it. <laughs> I mean, that was in my time. Okay. We hung it up there everywhere. On this side. Yipper. Hey, Mal, on both sides, both okay. ends. Okay. So the thrashing floor would have been here too, right? Would this have been the thrashing floor or the one over there? The one over there. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. The grain would go here? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. This would have been an original wall, probably, yeah. of that smaller barn, probably. Okay. That's my guess, anyway. And you can see, I mean, this, this truss work is pretty old. This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.